Hello, and welcome everyone to the presentation of our paper Synthesis of Kit of Part Structures for Reuse. This work has been carried out together with my colleagues Gennaro Senatore, Ioannis Mirzopoulos, Alex Morrison, and Corentin Fivet at EPFL in Switzerland. This presentation is divided into four parts. First, let's get an overview of the construction sector today. Construction is responsible for about 50% of the raw material use worldwide. At the same time, buildings cause about one third of the global CO2 emissions. And at the end of life, buildings and infrastructures are frequently demolished, leading to tremendous amounts of waste. One reason for this problem is our current linear economic system, which works on a make-use-dispose basis, where products are not valued at the end of their life. Instead, shifting to a more circular economy that aims at extending product lives has potential to reduce environmental impacts of the construction sector. The strategy focused on in this work is reuse, in particular the reuse of structural components for multiple service cycles. Reusing structural components has the advantage that it makes best use of already existing functions, it reduces resource use, it avoids reprocessing energy, for example, to remelt steel, and it prevents waste. One strategy to reuse structural components is to source them from existing but obsolete buildings and structures, like shown in this example, one could reuse the elements of old electric pylons to design new structures like this train station roof. This approach we would call design from reuse. Instead, the focus of this work is somewhat the inverse process, which we call design for reuse. That means we want to design a product with new materials today, such that its components can be reused for multiple service cycles in future. In the context of architectural geometry and spatial structures that we are here in, design for reuse means that we want to design a bespoke kit of parts whose components are ready to reuse among geometrically and topologically different structures. And the question that needs to be solved is how to design the structures and the kit of parts that they fit together. Essentially, this kit of parts design approach requires to consider the following specificities. All parts must geometrically fit to multiple structures. All connections must be reversible. We need to consider the fabrication constraint and also the transportability of all parts. Of course, construction systems based on the kit of parts idea already exist. We probably all know the Mero system composed of universal bars and joints. However, one restriction of these systems is that they are often constrained to repetitive modular arrangements, which is somewhat limiting the design space of these systems. At the same time, there exist very sophisticated architectural geometry rationalization methods to design freeform systems with repetitive elements. For example, meshes that contain only sets of identical triangles or quads. Other methods approximate freeform shapes with a prescribed set of identical bars and joints. However, all these methods typically only consider the rationalization of individual systems, and they don't care about the potential to reuse parts among different structures and for multiple service cycles. Now let's have a look at the new methods of this work. The aim of this work was to develop a computational workflow to design a kit of parts made of reusable bars and joints to build different non-modular reticular structures. Here the linear bars serve as the structural members and the joints are used to connect those bars with bolts. In a sense, the idea is that you have your kit of parts and you can assemble a first structure from it then after its use you can take it down and with the same parts you can build a second structure for example for a new purpose or at a different location you can take it apart and you could even build another third structure in this case this tower 
This is particularly interesting for temporary structures and events and exhibitions. To achieve that, we have developed a computational workflow that consists of two main parts. First, a form finding part where the geometries of the set of defined structures is optimized such that a set of bars with bespoke lengths can be reused among the different structures. And second, a joint optimization step, which is used to design spherical joints that combine the connection pattern of nodes in different structures into one reusable joint. All this is implemented in a way that it allows for fast computations and user interactions. For example, that you can adapt the designs interactively and to directly get information on the results and output fabrication data. The main principle of the form finding step is to optimize the geometry of multiple structures simultaneously and not individually. The geometry optimization is carried out through a custom implementation of kangaroo physics. The goal of this optimization is to obtain structure members with sets of identical lengths, such that bars can be reused among multiple structures. This is achieved through k-means clustering, where the members are clustered into groups by length, and then the node positions are optimized so that the member lengths within each cluster equalize. This process is illustrated here. See at the top the two structures with 12 and 11 members, and at the bottom a list of all members and their lengths. Now we want to cluster the members into three groups. Then the geometry is optimized to match the member lengths with the mean length of each group. This is repeated until convergence. At the end, we have obtained two structures with three groups of identical member lengths. This means that bars of these lengths can be reused among the structures. But this also means that we only need to produce a subset of bars to build the two structures. Here we only need 15 bars. The quality of a form finding result is therefore measured through a so-called homogenization rate, which is defined by the ratio of the total number of members in all structures over the total number of bars in the kit of parts. Here for this example, the homogenization rate would be 23 over 15. In general, the higher the number, the better. After the form finding has been performed, all kit of parts bars fit to positions in multiple structures. The second part of this work considers the design of reusable joints. Here the idea is to combine the unique connection pattern of nodes in different structures into a bespoke joint that can then serve at these different node positions. This task of combining the connection pattern of multiple nodes into one joint is equally expressed as an optimization problem. The idea is to find the best rotation of the whole sets, here shown in red, white and blue, such that the holes are distributed well over the joint spherical surface and such that partial overlapping of holes is avoided. To achieve this, we use the genetic algorithm to maximize the volume of the convex hull that is generated from the hole centers. The larger the volume of the convex hull, the better the holes are distributed. In addition, we added a penalty term if holes are partially overlapping. Here you see an illustration of this process. First, you find the optimal rotations of the hole sets such that holes are well distributed and not overlapping. And then you can use this joint in multiple node positions of the different structures. Let's look at some case studies. Here you see three space frame structures thought of as temporary roofs for example, used in the case of different events. The structures have between 300 and 420 members and 100 to 160 nodes. And now we would like to apply our algorithms to design a common kit of parts to build the three structures. This slide shows the geometry of the three structures when we aim to build them with only four different bar lengths. Here the geometry optimization produces quite regular structures with the trade-off that the proximity to the initial target geometry is not well preserved. Yet this gives us a high homogenization rate of 2.48, which means that we only need 456 kit of parts bars 
to build the three structures that have 1,132 members in total. In the next case, we allow more groups of bar lengths, here 10. We can see that the structures resemble better the input geometry with the trade-off of a lower homogenization rate. In other words, in this case, less bars can be reused among the three structures than before. A further increase to 22 length groups preserves even better the initial geometry, but again reduces further the homogenization rate. With our computational workflow, it is then possible to interactively adapt the design and to visualize the results, which allows the user to then eventually pick the design he or she prefers. To summarize the form finding results, we have seen that when we increase the number of clusters K, the reuse rate decreases, but increasing K also helps to preserve proximity to target shapes. In general, the case studies have shown that the member lengths within each cluster match to a very small tolerance, which is acceptable for building construction. For these case studies with more than a thousand bars, the CPU times are short and allow an interactive workflow. And most importantly, through being able to reuse bars among multiple structures, we can achieve a significant reduction in the number of bars that need to be produced compared to one of construction. Now, let's look into the joints of the three structures that we've seen before. The common way would be to produce one individual joint for each of the 384 nodes in all three structures. Because in this case, only a small number of holes needs to fit on the joint sphere surface, smaller joints with radius of 29 mm could be used. Instead, when we use our method to design reusable joints, we require a larger joint sphere radius of 33 mm to fit the whole patterns of up to three nodes into a base book joint. However, this reusability brings the advantage that we only need to produce 186 joints, and by that we save 29% of material compared to the one-off fabrication of individual joints. Now I would like to show you the application of these methods to design three prototype structures. Here you see the final prototypes, a grid shell structure, a portal frame and a column structure that have been realized. The three structures consist of 351 members and 140 nodes in total. Through our methods, the kit of parts and the three systems have been interactively designed. In this case, we obtained an optimal kit of parts with six different bar lengths between 40 cm and 1 m 40 and the minimum number of 54 bespoke joints. Here you can see all the kit of parts elements that are required to build the three structures. We have used acrylic glass tubes as bars and wooden spheres for the joints. For the joints, we have used a robotic fabrication process to manufacture the bespoke hole patterns for each joint. Here the idea was to attach the joint spheres onto a robotic arm and then drill the three-dimensional hole pattern with a stationary drill. All the tubes have been cut by hand from 2 meter standard length acrylic glass tubes. We also selected the cross-section of these elements based on the forces in the structures, but also to be able to slide them into each other to reduce packaging volume. Here you can see all parts and a demonstration of the assembly and disassembly process. You build the first structure and the second structure and you can always take them apart. And then here you see the assembly of the shell structure. Finally, I would like to conclude the contributions of this work. We have shown to you a computational workflow to design and manufacture kit of parts, bars and joints that can be used to build structures of diverse shape and topology. The presented workflow allows for user interaction and can be adapted to project specific needs. In general, we believe that the idea to design systems for multiple purposes and to reduce environmental impacts through reuse and reversibility 
will create great opportunities for future architectural geometry research. Thank you all for your attention.